Got another set of exam questions for the chromatography playlist. So this one covers thin layer chromatography, gas chromatography, and then there's a calibration graph question with an associated calculation. Hope you find the video helpful, and if you haven't subscribed already, why don't you subscribe and let me know what you think, and maybe suggest uh, further topics that I can do in future videos. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So we've got these two TLC plates for these um, amino acids, these known amino acids and the unknown amino acid, but they're in two different solvents. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the RF value of serine in solvent W. So we're looking at this TLC plate and we're actually interested in this spot here. So what we need to do is measure the distance between the origin of the spot and where it gets to. So that distance there. And we'll divide that by the distance travelled by the solvent. So from there all the way to the solvent front here. So all I've done is measured this distance here on my iPad screen. So 24 millimetres for that. And it was 70 millimetres for that. So RF value 0.34. So the next part of the question, I'm going to keep these on the screen because we're going to need them, is to establish what uh, unknown amino acid is. So we can see it's, it's occurring at different locations in the different solvents. So in solvent W, the unknown amino acid matches the uh, position of leucine and glycine, whereas in solvent X, it's matching alanine and glycine. So the common one in there is glycine, so the unknown amino acid is glycine. So the explanation I'm given is it's glycine because the RF value matches for both solvents. It's the important bit, the fact that it's both solvents who've got the match. So moving on to the next question, which switches to gas chromatography. It's actually gas liquid chromatography here. So all that means is that the capillary column has a liquid uh, stationary phase. Remember, the carrier gas carries these components through the column um, and they hit the detector. So that leads us nicely onto the first question. State the meaning of the term retention time. So that's the time it takes for a component to travel through the column in gas chromatography. Or you could say the time from injection of a sample to its detection. Moving on to the next part of the question, explain why the four esters will have different retention times. So remember, it's gas liquid chromatography. So the um, components, the esters, will dissolve um, by different amounts into that liquid stationary phase. So the way to say that is they have different relative solubilities in that liquid stationary phase. So moving on to part B, which deals with the calibration graph, the first thing we've got to do is um, describe how this could be obtained. So first thing you would do is make standard solutions, or so known concentration solutions of the ester. So using the values here on this x-axis, you could make 20 micrograms per milliliter, 40, 60, 80, 100. And then once you've got your standard solutions, you'd need to take each one at a time and run it through the GC apparatus. And the machine just measures the area for each concentration and then turns it into this relative peak area by basically dividing through by the smallest area. So obviously the lowest concentration will give you the lowest area. So that's why that's assigned one. And there's direct proportionality between concentration and peak area anyway. So that's why it's going one, two, three, four, five. And then all you do is plot your relative peak area against the concentration, and you'd get that. So moving on to the final part of the question, we've got to use the calibration graph, so this thing here, to reduce the concentration of B in the solution. But importantly, it has to be in moles per decimeter cubed, whereas we've got this awful unit here of... Uh, micrograms per milliliter. So if we look at the original gas chromatogram, you see I've highlighted S to B. It's got this relative peak area of 4.5. So when we go over to the 
calibration graph, find 4.5 on the relative peak area axis, and then just take along, go down. So the concentration of the ester is 90 micrograms per milliliter. Next thing I've done is just multiplied that by 10 to the minus 6 to go from micrograms to grams. Next thing I'm doing is going from milliliters to decimeters cubed. So there's a thousand milliliters in a liter, and a liter is a decimeter cubed. So if we multiply that by a thousand, obviously we need to multiply this by a thousand. So it's 90 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per decimeter cubed. So we're nearly at moles per decimeter cubed now. So I just need to turn this into moles. Moles is mass over MR. MR of that ester is 88. So it's coming out as a concentration in moles per decimeter cubed at 1.02 times 10 to the minus 3. So it's quite tricky that one, sort of playing around with the units, but hopefully uh, my explanation made sense.